Mick Schumacher has clung on to F1 by his fingertips since being dropped by Haas at the end of 2022, but his role as Mercedes reserve driver and flirtations with landing a race seat with another team have so far come to naught. So after almost two years out and multiple rejections, does that mean it's all over for him in F1? The 25-year-old's most recent disappointment was missing out on being selected to replace Logan Sargent at Williams. Franco Colapinto got the nod, with team principal James Vowles making the situation worse with his cutting assessment of Schumacher's abilities. He said Schumacher isn't special, he would just have been good. Now, that statement is hardly unreasonable. Schumacher is a perfectly competent F1 driver, but he's hardly in the top class. Fowles later clarified that he used special in the context of multiple world champions like Ayrton Senna and Lewis Hamilton and confirmed he had apologised to Mick. Apparently, his comments didn't go down too well with Mick's mum, Karina, either. Fowles might have said a little too much, admitting he'd been foolish, but fundamentally he is correct. Schumacher has never shown superstar potential in F1. If he did, he wouldn't have been outperformed by Kevin Magnussen in 2022, driving a Haas car that could score points. However, Schumacher is a capable driver, a diligent worker, decent technically, and still only 25 years old. He's also got two seasons of F1 experience, as well as recent testing mileage for Mercedes, McLaren and Alpine, which means that for now, he's still current as an F1 driver. That's why he's a logical candidate for drives, given how small the pool of drivers with recent F1 experience is. Before missing out on Williams, Schumacher was also in the mix for the Alpine drive. After missing out on Carlos Sainz, Alpine opted for rookie Jack Doohan from its own academy. But Schumacher is also in the Alpine fold as one of its World Endurance Championship drivers and was given a test in the 2022 spec Alpine alongside Doohan at Paul Ricard in late June. That test confirmed Alpine's view Doohan was the right way to go, and although the Australian had the advantage of benefiting from previous running in the car this year, Schumacher didn't do anything in that test to wow the team and change its mind, so another outside chance of a drive was gone. Former F1 driver Ralf Schumacher, a winner of six Grand Prix, wasn't impressed with the treatment of his nephew. He said on Sky Sports Germany that Mick was disadvantaged by running in the morning and wasn't given a fair chance. That wasn't helped by the fact Mick found out Doohan had been signed on social media when it was announced rather than being told ahead of time. As Doohan confirmed he was told he had landed the drive the day after the Belgian Grand Prix before the summer break, signing the contract later that week, it meant Schumacher also didn't find out until some time after that was finalised. It suggests Alpine never really regarded him as a serious candidate. The bottom line is that Schumacher has missed out on a shot at Williams and Alpine. He was also never a consideration for the vacant Mercedes seat for 2025 that has gone to Kimi Antonelli. That means that while Mercedes is willing to trust Schumacher with a car as an emergency stand-in, he's not highly regarded enough to be a contender for a race seat. So why is Schumacher finding it so hard to get back into F1? Schumacher has a good racing CV, winning the European Formula 3 Championship in 2018 and Formula 2 in 2020, but it's his two years racing for Haas that are the most influential in judging his potential. The first season was a write-off, quite literally given Haas did the bare minimum to develop its carryover 2020 car in order to focus on the new regulations for 2022. Unsurprisingly, Schumacher didn't score a point, but he took a best finish of 12th in Hungary and outperformed teammate and fellow rookie Nikita Mazepin. In fact, Schumacher comfortably outclassed Mazepin. He had an average qualifying advantage of 0.456 seconds and finished ahead of his teammate 11 times on the 14 occasions when both finished. The consensus was that he had done a decent job in difficult circumstances. As I wrote at the time, he had an intelligent, professional attitude and made good progress. And Schumacher felt that he was on an upward curve, citing strong drives in Hungary, Turkey and Qatar as proving the progress he made. But with a more competitive car in 2022, Schumacher didn't kick on in his second season and was comfortably outperformed by experienced teammate Magnussen, who himself has since been resoundingly beaten by Nico Hülkenberg. A huge accident in qualifying for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, which meant Schumacher missed the race as Haas wanted to protect its limited spares, didn't help. In fact, accidents came to define Schumacher's 2022 season as he also had a big crash at the swimming pool in Monaco, with the rear end being torn off the car. He'd been forgiven for the accidents he'd had in 2021, notably in Monaco, France, Hungary and Saudi Arabia, but was expected to be cleaner in his second season and the pressure was starting to build. It took until the 10th race of the season at Silverstone for Schumacher to score his first F1 points with 8th place, just losing out on 7th in a battle to the line with the hobbled Red Bull of Max Verstappen. That said, Schumacher was set to score in Miami five races earlier until a late collision with Aston Martin's Sebastian Vettel. He was also on course for points in Canada four races later before a power unit problem forced him out. 
He followed up his first points finish with a career best sixth place in Austria. But that's as good as it got for Schumacher, whose season trailed off. In qualifying, Magnussen was on average 0.146 seconds quicker and in races finished ahead 10 times out of 16 when both finished. Crucially, he banked 25 points to Schumacher's 12. Schumacher's relationship with the team deteriorated, which only made his on-track performance worse. He was already on thin ice when a crash in the wet after the chequered flag in FP1 at Suzuka that forced a chassis change stretched team principal Gunter Steiner's patience to breaking point. Although Schumacher wasn't crashing constantly by any means, having three such costly accidents worked against him. And with his performance not deemed good enough and a lack of points, Haas took the understandable decision to bring in the experience of Nico Hülkenberg for 2023 and Schumacher was dropped. Schumacher was determined to get another chance in F1, even going so far as backing himself to be capable of winning the World Championship. The trouble is, he's yet to find a team boss who agrees, but his hopes haven't been entirely extinguished. While Schumacher is expected to remain as a Mercedes reserve driver next year and should continue to race in WEC, his real target is an F1 race return. With Red Bull's driver ecosystem a closed shop, there's really only one seat left on the grid at Sauber. Valtteri Bottas is favourite for that drive, but with plenty of vocal lobbying in Germany, there's always the possibility that Audi might want to go for an all-German lineup by partnering him with Hülkenberg. However, right now that appears desperately unlikely and would be a puzzling decision, even though Schumacher does have a pre-existing relationship with new Audi F1 boss Mattia Bonotto. Most likely, that means another season on the sideline awaits. He will continue to be an option for any team needing to make a driver change, but having been rejected outright or overlooked by so many teams, Schumacher's hopes are fading. But given his experience, he remains in the game, so can't completely give up hope. Realistically, he will require luck to get back in. Teams are looking for potential superstars and, as Val said, Schumacher is seen as good rather than special. It's an evaluation that's difficult to argue with, which is why his dwindling hopes of a return depend upon a team wanting an experienced hand. So has F1 treated Schumacher unfairly? There's plenty who argue it has, not only members of his own family but also Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko. He said Steiner did not treat Schumacher fairly. However, Marco clearly didn't feel it was that unfair or he would have brought Schumacher into the Red Bull fold. That was an option for 2023 when Red Bull instead made the ill-fated decision to sign Nick de Vries. That highlights one aspect of Schumacher that does make him unappealing to teams. His surname and the noise that surrounds him have been portrayed as a positive for Schumacher, but that has not been the case lately. Comments from the likes of Ralph Schumacher and others with long-standing connections to the family as well as parts of the German media haven't helped. Has found that counterproductive and other team bosses are well aware of the baggage, with Steiner explaining the problem in an interview with Sky Sports F1 in 2023. But none of that would matter if Schumacher was reckoned to be more than just a decent F1 driver. He's certainly that, and if he was given another chance in F1, he wouldn't do a bad job and would have the chance to prove he's used his time on the sidelines to work on his weaknesses. But it's difficult to argue he would do a great job and that's what teams are looking for. In F1, performance is what matters. The bottom line is that Schumacher hasn't wowed any team he's driven for, which is why he keeps finding himself on the list of options but never at the top of it. Perhaps he can change that perception given another chance in F1. There's every chance he would do a better job, but there's nothing to say it would be better by a significant enough margin to make him anything more than a solid midfield performer.